and the controller seems to be... Well, I spoke too soon. Hello, this is Sonic Regional Park. I just want to let you know, know that your boat is due back in three minutes. What's up guys, welcome back to Pat Outdoors. I just want to start by saying do not do this at home. This is not a recommendation for you to overvolt your electric outboard motor. I'm simply doing an experiment to see if we can force this Hankai 48 volt 1200 watt electric outboard to go any faster with minimal modifications. Somebody recently commented on my last video about this outboard that he's been running the same exact one with a Suron 60 volt stock battery for over a year with the stock controller, which I believe charges to 67 volts when it's fully charged. So I kind of want to see if I can turn it up a notch and run this with a 72 volt battery with the stock controller to see if it even works. So this is the previous lithium battery pack that we used for initial testing. This is just a 16 amp hour, 52 volt battery that I borrowed from one of my e-bikes. And this outboard ended up pushing the 12 foot John boat to six miles an hour consistently, but it only lasted a little over three miles since this is such a small battery. This is only 16 amp hours. What we're using today is an Amorge 72 volt, 20 amp hour lithium battery pack, which is a much higher quality battery than this and has a much higher output. This puts out 120 amps peak and holds 60 amp continuous. It's a smaller version of what I use on my SX500, which by the way, I just fixed. And this thing is ridiculously fast. It goes well over 60 miles an hour, but we'll go over this in more detail on a future video. So we already know that this combo pushes the John boat to six miles an hour continuously, but I just want to get a clean baseline to measure from. So I'm going to measure the prop speed with this digital tachometer at full throttle to see how fast it spins the prop at 52 volts. So we have something to compare to when we hook up the 72 volt battery. Just gonna cut a section of this silver tape to put on the prop. All right, voltmeter is measuring out 57.8 volts. So this is pretty fully charged. Well, it is over 8,500 RPM. So let's go see what it does with 72 volts. So I've got a suspicion that this is gonna burn out the stock controller, but if that happens, I really don't care because I'll just upgrade it. But like I said, don't do this at home. I'm just experimenting since I'll likely upgrade the motor and controller on this outboard anyway, because I'm just obsessed with these things. Voltmeter gauge is showing 81 volts, so that battery is pretty fully charged. Well, it runs it. Well, let's test it out. thousand rpm that is so much faster than 8500 so let's see if this actually works starting off with 81 volts hopefully this works <laughs> So far, it definitely feels like it's faster, though we are in a different style John boat. I think the prop is pointed a little bit lower than before, but I think the last time I looked, we're going a little over seven miles an hour. The water definitely looks a little bit different versus last time.
from what I've noticed so far, it's able to hold a steady seven miles an hour with the 72 volt battery with hitting eight miles an hour occasionally here and there. And the controller seems to be, well, I spoke too soon. There it is guys, it cut off on us. What is going on here? Of course we would burn out the controller in the middle of the lake. All right, let's check out what's going on here. Yeah, the, motor, the motor's quite hot. Same with the controller. I'm gonna let this cool down for a few minutes and we'll give it another shot. I'm really hoping that this controller is going to turn back on because I do not want to row all that way back. Oh, thank God. Oh my God. <laughs> I was getting so nervous. All right, so I just let the motor cool off for two minutes and then I unplugged the Anderson connector and plugged it back in and it turned right back on. So after running for a little under two miles, we are holding a voltage of 76.2 volts. So it seems like the controller and the motor just ran too hot after pulling on it at full speed for 1.6 miles. So I can see how a 60 volt battery like the stock Suron could run this motor all day without any problems. But starting off with 82 volts on a 72 volt battery may be a little bit too much for the stock controller to handle. Yeah, I think this controller is completely fried at this point. So I'm just gonna let it rest a little bit, reset it, and then put it back at like three miles an hour. It seems to run just fine if I'm just going low speed and not drawing too many amps. So we're just gonna do that until we get the boat back. Yeah, I'm just gonna leave it with the cover off since it didn't seem like it cooled down too much, even though we let it sit for like a solid 15 minutes earlier. The motor and controller are both still hot. So that might be another improvement that I might make in the future. I might add a cooling fan at the very top of this and remove some of this plastic stuff that doesn't really do anything. It's the heat sink that we want to be efficient. While we're letting this cool down, let's take a closer look at the electronics here just to see the possibilities of what we can switch out in the future. So the ignition switch, red and the orange wires, the black and red up here are just going to the voltmeter. The three pin connector here with the black, blue, and red wire is for the throttle, which is wired up just like my e-bikes. And then these two remaining two pin connectors, the green and yellow one and the white and brown, one is for cruise control and one is for forward and reverse. I'm not quite sure what these two small orange connectors are that looks like it's supposed to clip into each other. And then I've just got the phase wires, the power and the ground in the yellow junction block in the back. So it's wired up very similar to an e-bike though. One thing I noticed that's different is this motor doesn't have a connector for a hall sensor. So that's the only thing missing on this brushless motor in comparison to my other e-bikes and stuff like that. I'm curious to see if this adapter at the bottom of the housing would fit like an MY1020 or like a Electro & Co EC4P motor. That would be amazing if that were to bolt up because then I can just hook up a like a Kelly controller or a true moto, maybe even a far driver to run it with a huge battery. And we can get really crazy with the power here. There's definitely a lot of different options we can take with this if we want to upgrade it in the future. So maybe I'm gonna take this motor off and check out the adapter at the bottom just to measure out the bolt pattern. So the sun is now setting and we're well over a mile away from the dock. So hopefully this turns on. Okay, so it seems to be okay. I'm just gonna put it at maybe like three or four miles an hour. Hopefully the controller does not cut off. Otherwise we are rowing back.
guess it's back day. They're too complete. Hello, this is found in the regional park. I just want to let you know, know that your boat is due back in three minutes at eight. If you need any help or have any questions, please call 703-250-9124. Thank you. All right, well, that was quite an adventure, but I've got some good news. It looks like the Hankai motor is not fully dead. Neither is the controller. It actually functions. It actually still functions just fine with a 52 volt battery hooked up. But obviously it's not designed to handle 72 volts. It just simply can't handle that much power and the controller just overheats immediately. So we are gonna be doing some upgrades for this outboard motor in the near future because I wanna go at least 10 miles an hour. I just kind of get bored with anything less than that. But if you enjoyed today's video or found it helpful in any way, do me a favor and hit that like button. If you like this kind of content want to keep up with some of my projects some of my bikes consider subscribing to this channel but this is going to be it for today thank you for watching